Steve Crosby here. Welcome again to this issue of Monday Morning Musings. Today I want to talk to you about the kingdom message that Jesus has brought. It's fun to compare similarities and differences between John the Baptist and Jesus. One thing that we can be sure of in the sense of Jewish expectations for the end of the age. Old Testament, New Testament, prophets, Pharisees, Sadducees, how, however you want to look at it. There was a quality of Jewish expectation about the end of the age. And that was this, that when the end would come, God was going to even the score with those that had oppressed Israel and all evildoers. Otherwise, their view of the end of things was judgmental and violent. The mighty warrior God is going to even the score. And it's very interesting that John the Baptist's message was repent. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Be baptized for your sins. Jesus comes and he preaches a message announcing the kingdom. And in his kingdom message, not only only is the element of judgment missing, but the element of God's favor towards people who are worthy of judgment characterize it. We see that in Luke chapter 4 when he quotes Isaiah 61 and doesn't quote the part at the end about, you know, uh, evening the score with the, the unrighteous. The difference between John the Baptist's message and Jesus' message is very profound, and it's one of the foundational differences between an Old Covenant and a New Covenant mentality. Someone might say, well, man, Jesus had a lot of judgment sayings. Yes, he did. Do a study sometime of the kind of categories of his judgment statements, and know what you're going to find, and this is mind-blowing to me. The one who made those judgment statements ended up himself being unjustly judged. The cross and all the things that were said about him at the cross, unjustly condemned, accused of being a criminal, accused of being a blasphemer, accused of being an em enemy of God, accused of being a rabble, ro a rabble rouser against Rome. Go through the scriptures and itemize all the various different accusations that came against the Lord personally and tie them into some of his judgment statements. Now, we know he wasn't guilty of those things, but the culmination of his kingdom message it was this, in him being judged, he was bringing an end of that way of thinking as a human being. And we see the culmination of it at the cross. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. That's so hard for us to believe. So hard for us to fathom. Well, they have, because our whole sensibility of fair play is that people are responsible for what they do. They, get, they should be punished for what they do. The kingdom message, the gospel message that Jesus brought to the earth has many components to it. It's like a diamond with many facets to it. And one that is not normally emphasized or taught at all because the emphasis about where is your soul going to go when you die has just so dominated for centuries and I understand that if I was alive in the middle ages and I was living a miserable life and disease and poverty and and an average lifespan really of under 40 years really is probably under 35 years think about it you're dead by the time of 35. The idea of going to a place where all that misery stops would really motivate you. But the emphasis that I'm going to bring forth right now, it has been lost. And that is in the work of the cross, in the kingdom message, in the resurrection of Jesus, there was an inauguration of a new 
type of human being. A type of human being whose way of engaging the world and people in it was not based on judgment. Judgment, and I mean condemning judgment, judgment with uh, punitive guilt associated with it comes to an end in Jesus Christ. And for those who are truly converted, and I emphasize truly converted, they have become part of that new creation. And that means a qualitatively different realm of existence. It's very interesting. If you unpack that in 2 Corinthians 5 there, he's not talking about that individual of being a new being in the sense of uh, an individual and private transformation. But it's behold, if anyone is in Christ, it, it means this. It's like There's like, bam, and exploding into the new existence, the new realm of humanity. There's a new way of being human. The Adamic way of judgment and counterjudgment and violence and counterviolence is over. And Jesus has inaugurated a new quality of human being. That's part of the gospel message, folks. And it's not taught very often. And I sure can't do it justice in five or six minutes. But I hope I've given you something to think about, and I'll see you next time.